The Lord is in his holy temple, and all the earth keep silent before him. Welcome those who are joining us by social media. And he 
David said upon me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall you should live. And I will raise the moon upon you, and will bring up the flesh upon you, and cover you with sin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And I prophesied that there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Then said unto, unto me, prophecy unto the wind, prophecy son of man, and said to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breath among these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied against the command of me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, and had the seemingly great arm. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole bone, the whole house of Israel. Behold, they said, our bones are dry, and our hopes is lost. We are cut off for our part altogether. Therefore,
Most of all, Lord, I'm asking you just to bless our church members, Lord. You know our needs, you know our desires, and Lord, you know our hearts. And Father God, I'm just asking that you would catch us in the name of Jesus the Christ. That we may be able to do your will. We may be able to see your words on today that God has given our pastor to deliver. We're going to be the bell man today. And we thank you for thank you for our pastor. Father God, we thank you for this entire congregation. Father God, I pray that you will continue to keep us safe. Keep us in your care, Lord. And Father God, I'm asking right now that you will bless every church door that is open in your name and your name only. That you will continue to keep your loving arms around us as we continue to look to the hills which come out of here. And we know all of our help come from the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all. Father God, just look at that verse on our mind. Yeah. We ask that you will continue to bless them. The Lord, if you just look to the right of me, Lord. And Father God, I pray that you will continue to bless these brothers, Lord, yeah. where they can continue to lift you up. And Father God, just scroll across the room at 2023, Lord, and just continue to bless our mothers, Lord. You know they've been on this journey for a long, long time. And Father God, if they not tired, check. Yes, yes, they not tired, we are not tired. And Father God, I'm asking that you would just touch this entire church body. Keep us in your care, Lord. Continue to love us, Lord. Continue to guide us in the way that you would have us to go. And Father God, I dare not believe this is this is without thanking you, Lord, and asking you to continue to bless those that are going through the ring. For all the one that we know and the one that we don't know. Father God, come to know that you have all the power in your hands. And we thank you for your access in the night for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
we put our trust in you, Lord, and with all our heart. Help us, O Lord, to lean not unto our own understanding, but to your understanding, Lord. Let give us a grace and mercy, and give us peace and comfort in you. In Jesus' name.
how grateful we are for this marvelous privilege of preaching your word. As we approach this moment, oh God, may we realize that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. You are our Jehovah Shabbat. You are our peace. You are our Jehovah El Shaddai. God was more than enough. And we come in that matchless name. Asking you to shower your anointing on us once again. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you've been doing. Thank you for showing up in this place. We pray, God, that you will anoint us afresh. We might speak the infallible words of God. We thank you. Grant now that I may decrease. So that the real preacher can come. In the name of him who is our Christ, we pray. Amen. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. We shall begin our reading at verse 3, 3 through 5, and certainly refer to others. It has already been read responsibly. Thank you, Brother Cooper and Minister Jackson, who are here sharing with us, and all of our officers, our mothers, and our wives, Mr. Morris, and our ushers, visitors, and friends. Wonderful quiet. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for setting the tone in the quiet. For those who are joining us by social media, we in Ezekiel the 37th chapter, beginning at the third verse. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thy knowest. Before, and he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones. Say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5, thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. Amen. 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 And amen. Grass is still with me. Flowers are still fading. But the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to use as the thought you already see it coming. All right, bring it on. Can these bones live? Can these bones live? And metaphorically, the bones refer to the nations of Israel. Israel in the northern kingdom and Judah in the southern kingdom. They had become a wayward nation. A nation that had turned their backs on God and started worshiping idols. And this prophet Ezekiel was the younger contemporary of Jeremiah. Jeremiah had been prophesying in Judah. But Ezekiel was a street preacher. He was preaching in Babylon where they were in captivity in that 70 year sentence. And so at this time of the text, uh, this is about 50 years that they had been in captivity. I told this is about the restoration of the nation of Israel that had gone off a whoring on God. And I invite you this morning to join me in uh, this, this, with this tour guide that uh, was giving 
Ezekiel, a tour in Death Valley, where the bones were dry. And so when I had purposed to preach, really, from Matthew 26, dealing uh, with the, the Lord's Supper. Yeah. But this is a conversation that we need to have. Right. In light of young Tyree Nichols that uh, was murdered by police officers in Memphis, Tennessee. And I was moved to, in light of black history also, but I was moved for us to have a conversation about us as a people to somehow or another examine who we have become, what we have become, and why we have become, and raise the question among us, how can these bones live as a community? How can we live? How can we regain our self-respect? How can we become once again the beloved community? And he's using as an example here of this community of bones that's dry, very dry. And perhaps we can experience with them uh, the sight and the sound of that fact. What can we learn from this experience of people who are depressed, people who have become helpless, and people who have become hopeless, and people who have become bitter, people who have become dry because they are wordless. When you don't have the word, yeah. when you don't have the spirit yes, yes. of God in you, yeah. then look what you can become. Yeah. If we turn on each other, yeah. and we don't need Brother Al Sharpton to come to tell us that if this boy, Tyree Nichols, had been white, yeah. we would never have been in this situation. Yeah. They would have said, have a good day, sir. Yeah. About your way. But when a tra traffic stop can become a death sentence, when a traffic stop driving while black, then what has become of us? And so we need to raise the question among us can these bones live? He's trying to get home. Can they live? But I am concerned. Not just because the five police officers were black, but they had a badge. And they had a uniform. But what about the Tyree Nichols who were killed weekly on our streets? With no badge and no gun. We're killing up each other. What about the other Tyree Nichols that are dying? And blood is running in the street. So we have to ask the question, what's wrong with us? In this post-civil rights era of black America, when comparatively speaking, we have much more than our forefathers had when they built this sanctuary. And we have much more, but we're accomplishing much less Comparatively speaking, uh, we have more college education, but we have less collected aspiration. We have more resources at our disposal, but we have less resolve in our disposition to pull our resources together to help the masses. We must be careful as we treat each other. Not at this level, but it started at the Supreme Court of the United States when people are in position and they forget from which they've come. They forget who put them there. In various strata of society, we tend to forget when we get in position. We forget. Oh, 
you know Marvin Gaye asked the question. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Mothers, mothers, too many of you are crying. Brothers, brothers, far too many of you are dying. You know we've got to find a way to bring some loving back here today. That's my job. How do we father's father? We don't need to escalate. We we can fought too many walls. So how can we replace love? Bring love back into the community. Now, I get it. We have made great, great progress. I'm going to preach. We have made great progress. I, I understand we have made great progress. And, uh, and in, in spite of insurmountable odds as a people, in face of impossible odds, we have made great strides. We have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. We, it, it has not been easy. We've been on playing fields that were not meant for our success. We've gone to the back of the bus and the back of the restaurant. That's what we have gone. Dehumanizing and 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 uh, and discrimination have, have been our charge. Even medical examination, the Tuskegee Institute, in every strata of society. But we still have we still have done well. But the, and, and it's not just the it's just a few rotten apples that mess up the whole bush. It's just a few, but they get all of the attention. So my sisters and brothers, we need to ask the question. There's some things that's not that's systemic or that's structural, but there are other things that's behavior. We have to become more accountable in our communities. We have to get together when we have 16-year-old mothers and, and 35-year-old grandmothers and 40 some year old great grandmothers. There's something that, that's behavioral and not structural. There's something that we can do. And young brothers are more concerned about realms than they are about the future. More concerned about money. Some more concerned about coaches than we are about college. More concerned about our nails than we are about our future. There's some things that we can do. There's some things that, that we can handle ourselves. My young sisters, my young brothers, I was a couple of weeks ago, I was going into the office and I saw so many police officers a block away. And as I was going in, I asked what was going on. They say that the young man is being taken to jail and his, uh, his vehicle is being told. Why? Because he wouldn't shut up. All you have to do sometimes is just comply. Just comply and shut up. His mouth got him in trouble. And then if a white officer will come up, then we'll comply. But then we won't respect our own. Won't respect our own. So we must, we must get it together. So the context again. This Ezekiel was preaching and prophesying to the nation. It was prophesying to tell them that there is hope. And that's what we have to understand, that there is hope. And look what he does in the text. He says, this tour guide, this Death Valley tour guide took me into this place of dry bones. And the condition of the bones is that they were old bones, but they had been bleached. They were dry. They were very dry. And not only that, the bones, but they were scattered, not connected, a disconnected community. And not connected. They were everywhere. That's the condition of the bone. The character of the bone that they had gone off a whoring on God. Yeah. And whenever you turn your back on God, yeah. there is you. There's a disconnect right. in this community. The condition of the bone. And we look at the character of the bone. The people who had turned their backs on God. 
this community. And I like what this tool got. He got them all around and in the midst of the bomb. And then raised the question, son of man, son of dust, can these bones live? And the condition that we're in, can they live? Can life come back into the bones? This is divinity asking a question of dust. And whenever divinity asks a question of dust, it's not for divinity's knowledge, but it's for the dust knowledge. It's for man to know, where are you in relationship to me? Because I want you back. And whenever there's a dialogue with divinity, deliverance can come. We can get our, we can find our way back. Community, African American community, too often we're scattered over issues that do not matter. Over insignificant issues that do not matter. And as a result, there's no life sometimes in our community. There is no life in the community. Didn't we look like we had it we, when we were, when we had less, look like we had it. When we had less, look like we had more love. When we had less, we could go down Nelson Street, Brown Pastry Shop. When we had less, we had a community, we had insurance, and uh, we had the yeah, main restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Stop! 
stars in this silver socket. Lord, you know. Yes. You know, Lord. Can these bones live? Yes. Because you're the one who put breath in them. Yes. Genesis 2 and 7. Uh, and that if he made man, he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul because he was just an old man, in an object. But until he breathed into his nostril the breath of life, that's when he became because he was an object. And he can do that today. When the word and the wind have fellowship, then some noise is going to come. But there must be fellowship with the word of God and the wind. The wind Greek is pneuma. P-N-U-M-A. Pneuma. That's the Greek. It's air in motion. It's necessary for life. And so when the pneuma begin to blow, then you can become because you were not. If you have, don't have the word of God. And then the word of God will, will save you. But then the wind will cause you to move. Have activity. In him we live, move, and have our very being with the new mark is necessary. It's our mandate. It's our mission. It's the message about the Messiah. We must, it's the gospel. Really, this is the gospel according to Ezekiel. Yes, sir. You remember when Jesus had this nighttime interview with Nicodemus? Yes. Because oh, yes. you should have known this, Nicodemus. Yes. Because this is talking about the gospel right here. Yes. It's the wind yes. that blows. Yes. And who knows the path of the wind? Yes. But the God who asked me a question, who knows the path of the wind? Yes. Who knows how a baby is formed in his mother's womb? Yes. God, you know. Yes. Whatever your situation is, God knows. He, he knows where you live. He knows your situation. And all you have to do is have the word in you. And then let the wind blow in you. It's necessary for life. And that's our job today. Our job is to hear the word of the Lord. It's our assignment. It's our commandment. It's our charge. Let the wind blow. Yes. That's why we have the responsibility to preach when men want to hear us. Yes. Preach when men don't want to hear us. Yes. Preach in season and preach yes. out of season. Yes. You preach with your life. Yes. You preach with every day of your life. You're preaching to somebody. Because somebody is watching you. Yes. And somebody want to be like you. Somebody's impressed with you. Yes. We have a charge to keep. Every one of us have a charge to keep. And then when the wind blows, you will hear a noise. Yes, sir. You'll hear a rumbling in situation. You will hear things moving in our life. You begin to worship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You begin to worship again. Oh, yeah. Down in verse 10, he said, prophesy. And the, the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet with an exciting, exceeding great army. Oh, yeah. And that's what we are. Marrow will come back into the bone because the marrow is not there. You know, marrow uh, of a bone manufactures the stem cells and other substances which produces blood cells, red blood cells that will carry oxygen to the tissues in your body. But they were dried up. There was no blood in them. And so that's what we need to do. We need to let the marrow come back into our communities. We need to, every aspect, we can't leave any aspect of our community untouched. Right. He says, as you do unto the least of these, yes, you do also unto me. Yes. In other words, I don't, well, I, I can't live because without it, without the word of God. There's so many possibilities in our community. There's so many potentials in our community. But too often they're drying up because we're not doing what we are supposed to do. That's it. As I prepare to close, it's our mission. Yes. Yes. It's our message. Yes. It's our mandate. Yes. When the word of God goes forth, dry bones, dried up communities yes. Yes. can live. Yes. The chain is no greater than.
that is weakest link. Yes. It's our responsibility. Even in your personal, in your desperate situation, in your dismal condition, in your dilapidated community, yes. we can still live. For yes. we must tell the people. We must tell the bones yes. that that's death and life in the power of the tongue. Yes. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Yes. Watch what you say to yourself. Yes. Watch what you say to your children. Yes. Watch what you say. Yes. Because you will eat the fruits of your word because there's life and death in your words. The children again, I remind you, will not listen so much as what you're saying but they will watch your example. That's what they will do. They will follow your example. Tell them that they can do all things through Christ. Tell their bones. Tell them that they can do all things through Christ who strengthen them. Tell the bone that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, O Lord, and thy soul knows it right well. Tell the bones that if God be for you, who can be for Tell the bone that I have not seen, not he heard, not has an enter into the heart of man, the thing that God has in store for them. Tell the bone that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all According to the power that worketh in you, yeah. according to the word that you have in you. Yeah. Tell the bones. Yeah. I close today. Yeah. And I do not argue that uh, that little Tyree Nichols died yeah. after three days after he was beat. Yeah. I do not argue that that's biblical, but it reminds me. Uh, of the three days that uh, Abraham went to Mount Moriah, uh, 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 it just reminded me yes, how Moses' mama hid for three days. It, it, it reminded me how Jonah hid in the belly of the great fish for three days. It, it reminded me that. A man that visited Elizabeth yes. for three months. Yes. It just reminded me yes. that uh, Jesus had three disciples. Yes. Peter, James, and John that he took with him to the Mount of yes, Transfiguration. It, yes. it just reminded me yes. that there are three theological issues of faith. Yes. Faith, love, and It reminded me of the three gates yeah. and the four entrances to Jerusalem. Yeah. Three gates yeah. in the east. Yeah. Three gates in the west. Yeah. Three gates in the north. Yeah. Three gates in the south. Yeah. It reminded me yeah. that there was one yeah. who ministered yeah. for three It reminded me how he was beaten. Yes. It reminded me yes. how he was tried in kangaroo court. Yes. It reminded me yes. how he was speared in the side. Yes. It just reminded me how, uh, how the sun refused to shine. Yes. He was crucified. Yes. Can I get a witness here? Yes. And when he was dying, the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Yeah. It just reminded me yeah. that as he was dying, the sun, yeah. the S-U-N, yeah. refused to shine. Yeah. Because the S-O-N yeah. was hanging on the cross. Yeah. He died yeah. so the dry bones yeah. they buried him yeah. in Jonah's future. Yeah. He stayed in the Matthew 12 and Father says three days and three nights. And I get the witness here. They buried him in Joseph Newton. But Sunday morning, got up. Somebody said, Oh, Sunday morning, all the power, Holy Ghost power. Yeah.
get it together. We can come together. We have possibilities because he lives. That's potential in our bones, in our community. There may be crisis in the community, but we can do it. Through the word and the wind. No longer bound. No longer bound. No longer negative about our community and ourselves. All this self-hatred. Just let the word get in you and let the Holy Spirit move once again in our life, in our community. And then we can reclaim our self-respect. We can reclaim our children. We can become the beloved community once again. And all we have to do is just listen for the rumbling. Listen for the sound. Yeah, yeah. Bring peace and bring yeah. joy to the beloved community. No more envy and jealousy of one another. Crap and talent. Pulling each other down. Every time one goes up, we pull each other down. Yeah. 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 Let the blood go forth. And then we can, what an army we can become. People, everywhere they put you. Always rise to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Always rise to the top. No matter where you you rise to the top. Because great is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Yeah. Everybody knows it but us. We are the sleeping giant. Yeah. I wonder why they try to keep you down. Because of the potential that's in the body. <laughs>
walk with you. You've been helping me, and uh, we, we're going to be doing greater things. And uh, I just want you to, uh, uh, Minister Jackson has been uh, helping us in other areas, and uh, we've certainly been talking, and uh, he will be uh, assisting us further. But I'm going to ask you, uh, you have the statement you need, you need to make, and you can introduce that. I know this is your lovely wife, and this must be the grand. Jesus Christ as your person said, you have a statement you'd like to make? Uh, I should have been joined a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> My mom, who, who joined the church earlier, uh, she asked me, she said, son, you going to join Hines? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to join Mama. She said, good, come on, let's join this Sunday. I said, well, I'm going to be out of town. I said, I tell you what, Mama, we're going to join when I come back. Okay. And when I came back, she said, well, you join when you get ready. I've already joined. <laughs>
everybody, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that was bruised and broken for us on Calvary. And we eat in gratitude for what he's done for us. as often as we eat it, we are showing forth his death and suffering until he comes again. May we eat together. The wine symbolizes the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was shed for us on Calvary. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And as often as we drink it, we're showing forth his death and suffering until he comes again. May we drink together. 